Let's yeah. do that raw real emotions thing. All right. Mm -hmm. Like two days are a bad joke And you're getting dinner on the weeknights Cause I know you got work in the morning And I'll smile And you'll say, how you doing? I hope things are okay How's the new job and the new place? Aren't you glad we're finally meeting here face to face? And I just wanna be friends And I'm not gonna Solo, but solos aren't good on acoustic guitar, so la 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 la. Next verse! <laughs> Maybe in a second. Now the next Your friends <laughs> never liked me. I wasn't any social early morning string bean. And you get angry when I wouldn't tell you what all my songs were about. Not you! It'll take time to notice some beauty inside all of this ugliness. I know that it still meant something to me And I just wanna be friends And now I'm not gonna waste your time Cause you're not gonna shake my mind I just want you now but not for long you find someone you carry on well, it's getting late why don't you come on over outside I think it's getting colder That song is called Friends, and it's about being friends. <laughs> is it? That's right. No, it's not. It's not about being friends. It's about not wanting to be friends, I suppose. How's Instagram doing? Everyone on Instagram, are you killing it? Thank you. I hope they are. Thank you for tuning in. I hope everyone's staying safe, washing their hands, and using hand sanitizer frequently. Wear your mask when you go to the supermarket. Um, <laughs> and now, this <laughs> this is not this is not. This what we is were not about, about that. No. This next song 
Did I give the wrong lyrics? Yeah, you I'm did. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. I set you up for failure. We're going to do a cover now. Um, we hope you like it. And if you know it, sing along. And we can't see you sing along, but if you know it, sing it. All right, ready? Those guys are probably going to... Well, it's all right, mama. It's all right for you. That's alright, mama, just any way you do. That's alright. That's alright. That's alright now, mama, any way you do. Mama, she done told me. Papa done told me too. Son, that guy you're fooling with, she ain't no good. That's alright, that's alright, that's alright now, mama. Anything you do, Nicole. sing a few good ones. Yeah, he is known to sing a few good ones. Just a few. Just a few. <laughs> it's like one or two. When, yeah. you, when you have a whole museum tour based about your life, you probably sing a, a few good songs. Yeah, when your house you know, is... You uh, know, a no, fun you fact of the day. Uh, actually, my grandfather is the reason why Elvis Presley went to the war. He was on the draft board. Oh, wow. Did yeah. he draft Elvis himself? He did. A uh, quick little story on that is uh, my family on my mom's side is from Kentucky, and uh, there was a, a guy that was like, look, I want to fight. He was being drafted, and he's like, I want to, but please let me bring in the crops for my, uh, for my parents because they're too old to, and they're like, no, you're going, and so when it came to Elvis being drafted, they're like, everyone else was like, you know what? He's got a movie, so we'll let him do that. And my grandfather being the old school that he is, he's like, look, if the kid that wants to bring in the crops can't stay, then he's, uh, then he's got to go as well. Yeah. yeah. Your grandpa sent Elvis to war. Well, That's a crazy story. Yeah. Well, you know, it worked out in everybody's benefit because he came back and he rocked our songs. Huh? Absolutely. All right. Do you guys have one more song or are we jumping in? Well, we got one we more for you. Yeah, this song's called Late Night Phone Calls. Awesome. This is the most requested song on our Instagram, <laughs> on Instagram. questions today. <laughs> Love it. Nobody requested. <laughs> Here we go. 
hand sanitizer exactly safe word <laughs> first i want to say like your music is absolutely great but your oh, energy yeah. is so uh positive and fun and light and that's so refreshing in like uh, these times where we're like questioning everything about who we are yeah i mean i think that we've sort of made it a band uh, <laughs> make fun of ourselves and like just take the music seriously, but just not take ourselves very seriously. Because um, otherwise, I think with that. music stuff starts to get sort of, I don't know, not boring, but I think you start to lose sight of like what you're really meant to be doing. It's like, we just I, like songs, we don't, you know, it's like the rest of it is just band image stuff. We all think it's kind of jokey and weird. So we might as well just make fun of it. 
Well, with that, you guys have great energy, so that's absolutely amazing. I mean, I know so many of my friends who are struggling through all this, and uh, but if you're just tuning in, thanks for tuning in and taking time out of your day. This is Topanga Sessions. Please like and follow us because we're going to have amazing in-depth conversations. And uh, right now uh, with the Gooms, what uh, the theme of today is going to be is uh, instability in ourselves, in life, and just how we actually handle that. And I mean, right now is a, such a great opportunity to like, self-reflect and uh just grow and help other people so uh, guys i just want to let you go ahead and jump in jump in with instability uh okay. <laughs> <laughs> well one thing that we were talking about earlier is kind of how the two of us uh handle instability in different ways and uh the way that we're able to channel our creativity and music through that. So I guess I'll speak on my piece on the, on the prearranged topic. But uh, <laughs> so this EP, is, we recorded it in 2018, where most of the songs we just played are from. Uh, and as maybe you know, we're, we have a record coming out in July of this year, very exciting. But in terms of the EP, it was at least my first experience playing music with other people. And I got to jam in with Chase and Shane at that time. Ryan hadn't joined the band. And I had just experienced uh, a very intense part of my life where uh, my brother, who is completely okay now, he uh, had Hodgkin's lymphoma. And it was very, very scary. And it was about a year of just trying to live through that and like living I, I had transferred schools uh, around the same time and I lived at home and uh, it was a big mess and it was terrible and scary and I was just I felt very unstable and I was not able like I'd sit in my room and I'd just look at my guitar across the room and just not be able to pick it up and play for a very long time and right when I met Chase and Shane and uh, well, not Ryan yet, but right when I met Chase and Shane, I, it was the tail end of everything, and my brother had completely recovered, which was amazing. That's um, amazing. Yeah, and, uh, and we, I kind of got out of this depression that I was in, and was then able to create, and like everything that I guess had been bottled up for a very long time, kind of got to explode into the making of my contribution true raw emotion true raw emotion now the question i really want to ask you with all this is i mean that's devastating to have to like see a family member uh go through something like that which is amazing that he's recovered but what was the change like i mean so many people I, I can say easily that uh, I've had family issues with uh, different members with, for different reasons. Uh, and we always, a lot of us retreat, but what made you, what was that moment that actually flipped that made you go, I'm going to pour everything into my music or actually just move forward? Yeah, honestly, it was finishing chemo. I, I don't think that you can like, I, I at least was not able to process anything until all the treatments were done, the x-rays were done, the doctor said, you're good. I was like, thank God, this is great. And then slowly I was able to ease into like starting to feel okay and starting to feel myself. But it really like, for me, it's very hard to be creative through uh, dealing with this trauma and, and stress. And so as soon as that chemo treatment was over and I knew for sure, everything would be okay as soon as my family members knew that everything was going to be okay and I watched my brother get his strength and his health back it, it was just easy for me to step back into life that's amazing did you have any other times in your life where you just couldn't go forward but had the ability to actually still move forward uh I can't not to I got I, nothing specifically that runs through my mind I, I don't know I guess for me just in general I I run on a day-to-day -day basis 
and like whatever happens in, in a moment or in a day, like I process it and I'm just, I just continue and I, I, I do just move forward. And for those moments that I feel stunted, it's, I find that to be okay and I allow it. And you know, every day just, just happens, I guess. And you just got That's amazing. It's so, uh, it's so great to just realize that uh, every emotion is supposed to be there to either help you grow uh, from like an experience or at least release some trauma that you've had in your life. Uh, so whenever you're, you're struggling, it's really there to let go of pain or to understand it and actually become a stronger person. Thank you so much for sharing. Now we have on the other side, this gentleman right here who has the ability to move forward even when stress goes down. And I have to say, I have to commend you on that because I've had times where I've just shut down. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we all have at times where we feel like we just can't keep doing things and well, we completely shut down and I'd be lying if I said, I don't have uh, moments like that because I do on like a daily basis. But, uh, you know, when it comes to like, at least when it comes to like making music and stuff like that, like sort of going off of what Nicole said about how she can't really like create in these, you know, in like these times that are a little more like mentally draining. Like if you're going through something as difficult as like a family member having cancer or something like that, you know, I, I've had my own struggles with, you know, depression, anxiety, and mental illness and all that stuff. And, um, for whatever reason, for me, like being creative and um like making music i've been able to function pretty well in all of the dysfunction um and you know not that i can't also function in like a more stable environment because i'm <laughs> i'm sure that i can but as far as just uh, <laughs> as far as just creativity is concerned um i think i uh tend to be much more productive um, in like a dysfunctional or chaotic environment. And I, I'm not really sure um, why that is, but um, it seems to work that way for me. So it's interesting because, you know, when Nicole joined the band, uh, it was just Shane and I, our drummer, who's not here right now, but it was just the two of us. The dynamic was a lot different because there was just sort of like two people in a room, drums and guitar. It was just the writing environment, the creating environment was a lot different. And so when Nicole joined um, and wasn't used to sort of the dysfunction that we had like cultivated over like the year before uh, Nicole showed up, I'm, it was like, you know, not only did she have to learn to deal with like the way that we work, but we sort of had to manipulate like the way we play instruments, the way we write songs to sort of work around what she was capable of doing. And I think that sort of resulted in us making better music because we had to try a lot harder. Um, and, you know, I think that sort of resulted in why we sound the way we sound um, now. So. I totally get that. I mean, you, you kind of glossed over a little bit of like the pain and depression and stuff like that. But can you give me, uh, can you give the viewer that's uh, watching right here uh an example of the stuff that you were going through to get a better understanding yeah i mean i sort you know it's like it's more like that there's not any specific situation but you know for a long time i think that like i knew that music was something i wanted to do and chose not to pursue it not because i didn't think like i was any good at it or that i didn't like to do it but more that like I didn't really see it as like something viable and I had a lot of people telling me that like it wasn't something viable and um, you know I had moments of just like feel like you know there's mental illness and clinical depression that like exists in myself and I have family members that have it it's like it just you know genetic and uh, I found it that I get really I easily get down on myself and unmotivated about things for no particular reason and it wasn't until um, it wasn't until I like made the conscious decision to just be like, well, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing than just doing music that like I found a way to sort of like take 
the way I was feeling and the, you know, the dissatisfaction with how my life was going and, you know, not feeling motivated. And I was able to like turn it all into something that like I felt good about. And so now, you know, however many years later, three years since we've like officially started this band, um, not that I don't have bad days, but I found that like, I have a much easier time coping with my issues than I did before because I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm really wasting time. I feel like I'm putting things to good use, like I'm being productive with. I totally life. understand <laughs> that. Well, first off, thanks for sharing that. I know it's difficult. The problem that is that social conformity just tells us to pretend everything's good and brush everything under the proverbial rug. But the more that we share, the more that we're open, the more that we talk about these issues that we have on a day to day basis or these things that have like changed our lives forever. I, for instance, I was talking with Nicole about uh, before how I, uh, I know what I look like, but I actually dealt with, uh, I was very short and very fat when I was in like uh, elementary school. And uh, I, once I got tall and what you see today, I couldn't see it unless I was drunk. So I spent like a better part of 10 years just drinking, just to be able to see what I really looked like in the mirror, which uh, luckily I was able to recover. And uh, just very like, I'm very much about outspoken with what you're going on, what, what you, you at home, what you're going through, find someone who you can talk to. Because the more you start to open up with these struggles and pains, the more that you're going to find that they don't have any power except the ability to help you grow. Now, I do uh, want to ask you, uh, with going through all this mental illness and depression and everything, there must have been a moment you almost quit. And uh, do you have, is it kind of like the, an exact moment or was there like just a whole bunch of things that just led to this? Like, I'm, I don't feel like I should do what I'm supposed to do, even though I know this is what I love. Um, no, I don't think that there was a particular moment. Really? I mean, <laughs> Sorry, there's a plane. Um, no, I, I don't, I mean, for me, there wasn't a particular moment. I think it was just like, it was just like a long period of time of just like doing things that I thought I should be doing and being miserable doing them. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say like what is like the breaking point because I don't think that there necessarily was a breaking point. There was just like, I don't know. I think there was, it was more just like a feeling in me that like, I don't think that there's anything else that will be, that will sort of like satisfy the way I feel unless I like do this. I totally get that. It's uh, it's amazing how like sometimes like for me I have like a traumatic experience like that, and then for other it's just like continual life. But uh, just to go back, it's really yeah about sharing and opening up. That's really gonna help us get through this. And uh, thanks guys so much for sharing. I know you guys have one more song for us. And uh, before we jump in, uh, for anyone who's just tuning in. This is the Gooms with we are at with Topanga Sessions doing the live thing. I'm actually on my boat, which I live on, fun fact. Oh, cool. And uh, feel very fortunate with that. Uh, but also go ahead and like them on their socials. And uh, yeah, what song are you guys going to be playing? Um, this song is called I'm Judy Garland. It's the first single off our new record. And it relates <laughs> nicely to the subject matter that we've been talking about today. Well, let's uh, talk about it as soon as you're done. Looking forward All to right. it. Sounds good. I didn't mean to keep you up all night. 
sweat through your clean sheets Running from figures with a face like mine Short hair and crooked teeth And maybe in the evening you can prove to me this isn't real I'm Judy Garland, darling I'll never leave your side Nail my wrists and let my feet hang low Replace your heart with mine Won't always be a way to keep you close But I'm dumb enough to try and I promise to be better You won't find me on the bathroom floor I'm Judy Garland, darling I'll never leave your side <laughs> Love that. One thing I really have to say is just while we're doing these Instagram lives, you can just really tell how much uh, good energy and just how stage performance, if you will, you have even just like chilling in your apartment right now. So absolutely commend you on uh, that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, can you give us a little bit of background on this song? Yeah, so uh, Judy Garland. It's not about Judy Garland, um, but I don't know. I think I sort of see Judy Garland as this sort of tragic figure where her public persona was much different than her private persona or her, her life, at least. You know, we imagine the Wizard of Oz and the happy 
the happiness side of fame and all of that. And uh, I think the reality was much different. And this, this song was more about just like, you know, when you're feeling low or you're going through some sort of tragic moment in your life, but you feel like you want to be there for somebody else, but you don't really know how, or you feel like you can't, you're trying to tell somebody that like, even though you don't feel so great about yourself and how things are going for you, you still want to be that guiding light for somebody else. You want to be the person that somebody else can look to, even if you don't feel like you can be it for yourself. I absolutely love that. I, I, I do a lot of life coaching and work with people with pain and I've done it for my, for friends and just people, uh, even when I've been low. So I think that can resonate and even more so, to the fact is like i think everyone is puts on this giant front of who they are and the more that we can truly open up and share who we are the more that we can first build a connection with uh every like people and also just be able to grow stronger so thanks so much for that song guys yeah thank you for having us and will you go ahead and give us all your socials for those who are tuning in on Topanga Sessions? Uh, yeah, you want to give them socials? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one who knows them. Uh, we know got it. the Instagram at le underscore gooms, L-E underscore gooms. Yeah, it's a pun. We like those things. Um, Insta I already said Instagram. <laughs> Facebook. Facebook, that's the next one. Facebook, I think it's at the Gooms Band. I think that is, yeah. We're going to go with that. Uh, Twitter. Twitter, we got uh, at the Gooms. That one we're really proud of. We nailed that. Username. LinkedIn. We are, we are on LinkedIn. We, we are on LinkedIn. If you look us up, we graduated, what was it? Harvard School of Sound? <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. We made it. You should look at our LinkedIn. <laughs> We made it a long time ago. I don't think anyone's ever connected. We made it like four months ago. Connect with us. I mean, four months ago is a long time ago, considering everything that's going on right now. Yeah, considering the last few months have been maybe 10 years each. Uh, I think that's all we have. Yeah. And we said our album's coming out, laugh, with a period at the end of it. That's the whole tale. Uh, but yeah. July 24th. July 24th. And Excellent. And people coming out sooner. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. We're stoked. Yeah. Excellent, guys. <laughs> Well, I've got another helicopter coming over me, too. It looks like the people are uh, not driving. They're flying. <laughs> That's these days. Yes. These, these unsettled days. Oh, well, guys, yeah. thanks again so much. Uh, make sure you go and like them on their Instagram and check out their music. Uh, also, uh, add us. We do these twice a week, and it's really just about sharing and opening up and realizing that we're all connected. <laughs> Uh, not through what's the concept of cool, but through our pain and struggle, which is the best way you'll ever connect with someone. So thanks so much, guys. Thank yeah, you for thank having you. us. Absolutely. This is Topanga Sessions. I hope you guys have a safe weekend. And until next time. Uh, stay good. safe out there. <laughs>